Well, the Centrifuge Brain Project started in the 70s. Dr. Brenswick at the University of the State of New York was involved in a research on the effects of kindergarten rides on the learning curve of four-year-old children. We developed the idea of building a larger, stronger device to examine the effects also on adults. The first tests were a disaster. Um, it reached six Gs and it broke apart. We lost our academic standing. And then we had an idea. Matt's brother-in-law was on the board of a company that designed and manufactured amusement park rides. They had all the resources for us to continue our experiments. We designed our first real prototype, which was the Spherathon. When the rotation starts, the seats are lifted slowly by the centrifugal force, uh, causing the people to float upside down. The difficulty was stopping the rotation without people coming crashing down in the upper levels. We established an independent company funded by amusement park visitors. Well, the more people that came around to the amusement park, you know, the more funding we had. The second machine was named the wedding cake because of the four platforms set on top of each other. These machines provide total freedom, cutting all connection from the world you live in, communication, responsibility, weight. Everything is on hold while you're being centrifuge. Some of the test results that year were a little too extreme to be published, so for the next phase, we shifted our attention to height instead of acceleration. Well, actually, the first day wasn't really planned out very well. Everybody wanted to get on, and not realizing that it was a 14-hour ride, some people fell asleep, missed their stops, and had another 14 hours, you know, which, and you could imagine, you know, the problems that entailed. Well, after the experience of the high altitude conveyance, we found that people needed something to do in there. And we introduced an interactive option. Each cabin was equipped with a button. This way they felt they had a little bit of control over the ride itself. Except for one incident where the expander was placed a little bit too close to the building. There were no real problems with it, and there was a level of undefined brain activity around 30% higher than the kids who stayed on the ground. This contraption is the dandelion. It was designed to simulate the prenatal experience. For example, when a mother is walking, the baby would kind of move around. So we tried to compensate for the, the weight and size differential between an adult and a baby. The concept behind this one was that the subject had no idea which track it was going to take. Unpredictability was an important aspect of our work. Which in many people resulted in readjustments of key goals and life aspirations. We're using only 10,000 horsepower now. 
But I'm convinced once we reach 20,000, we're going to be free of all boundaries permanently, and it will be very stable. I mean, we had setbacks, but I wouldn't say that it was a mistake. It was not a mistake, if anything, the mistake is in nature. Gravity is a mistake. We fight the forces that hold us down, and whole life is an effort to escape from reality.